All right, guys, real quick, go check out Vair watches. They are waterproof. They actually started in Venice Beach, California in 2016. They look amazing. They have tons and tons of options on their website. I personally really like them just because I am so over like Apple watches and stuff, just buzzing and always kind of just notifying you about everything. That's really nice to get back to a timeless sort of watch. So go check them out or click the link in the description of this video, Vera Watches. Thanks again. Let's hop back into the video. All right, big shout out to Magic Mind. They're a little mini nootropic shot that pairs amazing with your coffee in the morning. It'll give you a very prolonged, sustained amount of energy and you have no jitters, nothing like that. It just makes you insanely focused, something I would like to call like or refer to as flow state. I have one every morning with my coffee. So if you guys want to get some, I recommend taking it that way and let us know what you think because I'm honestly being serious. It definitely gets you in the mood to get shit done. So that feeling I find when I'm surfing, like we call flow state, I can kind of find that with this magic mind. The founder James is awesome. They worked on it for a super long time. So go ahead and click the link in the description on this video. If you want to get some, go to magicmind.co forward slash coanate. We got a 20% off code for you. It's Coanate. If you get the subscription, it stacks with the on-site discounts and comes with free shipping. Or you can click the link in the description. Just use our promo code Coanate. Thanks again, MagicMind, for sponsoring this podcast. Okay, great big news, you guys. We have a ton of stuff that just launched for the Nate and Koa podcast. You can click the link in the description of this video to get some mugs. We got some pillows. We have a flag. We have a towel. We have a notebook. Some really awesome stuff. So thank you guys for supporting the podcast. And go check out all the merch. You can click the link in the description. It'll be right here. And thank you guys for the continued support. And we have a great podcast for you today. So stay tuned. Well, we just started, actually. Hey, John, stay on speaker. You're in the podcast with us. John, say something to the listeners. Hello, listeners. I'm gay. (laughs) 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 Okay, anything else? You want to thank thank Hello, anybody? Listeners, we just found out that Eli has mm. low testosterone. Oh, low T boys, gang gang, we'll make some shirts. <laughs> yeah, we should, we, we should <laughs> make tea merch. Gang. Low T gang. A lot of the boys would be in that club. Not the yeah, high T, the low T. <laughs> um, you want to stay on the phone or? So we're looking for a steroid sponsor. Oh, whoever yeah. has the best steroids. So you're still there. You have anything else to say? No, I don't have anything else to say. John doesn't know how to hang up the phone. Uh, You got intimidated? Yeah, I got intimidated. I don't know what to say now. Uh, (laughs) Well, if you want, you could just... I'll just leave you on speaker. You can uh, listen. Would you like to thank your sponsors or any (laughs) any of your friends or family? (laughs) How was Portugal? I feel like I've been on this podcast before. You guys are running out of people to talk to. You keep bringing the same people back on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thanks, John. <laughs> Sorry. We, we want to hear about your life. We try to get Mad Dog Ivan on. Dude, Ivan said, okay, yeah. I'll see you in 10 minutes. And then he just disappeared and never answered his phone again. You guys should bring someone random on from the street that's just walking by cars. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Start asking about their life. Reno Avalero. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> He's been cradling around. Dude, not <laughs> looking good. Does he still have his little dogs? Not looking good. Remember He's, he has little dogs? He told a crazy story to this guy about Holly Eva. And this guy comes up, and I'm in my car. John, you're going to want to hear this. And he goes, Hey, I, I, I don't know you, but like, I, I watch how you guys surf. Like, I just wanted to tell you this funny story that, you know, Re- Reno Avalero. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, well, he just told me the story while you guys were surfing. He says, the biggest day ever at Oliva. He wants to surf. Before jet skis, his buddy says, I can get you out there because he didn't know how to paddle out. And then so he gets a gun, and his buddy drives him out on a whaler out the channel and drops him off at the red from buoy. From the harbor. From the harbor. Drops him off at the red buoy. Or whatever buoy is at. Yeah, that big buoy in the channel. Yeah. Drops him off there. He paddles in on his gun and catches a wave in the middle of the channel and connects it through Oliva and gets barreled. Goes in, 
goes over to the guy who's back in the harbor and says, thank you, I'm done. And the guy says, no way, you're going to get one more. <laughs> Drives him back out, drops him <laughs> at the buoy. And then he says he gets an even better one, barreled from, from the middle of the channel <laughs> to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, that's an epic story, man. That's crazy. There's that no was my that big tale. It <laughs> may or may not have happened. And then... You don't want to end up with that. <laughs> you woke up. <laughs> Don, thoughts on that tale? That's all Nate's got for you, John. What do you think? I love it. I think it's a great tale. Okay. All righty. Well... Anyway, what do you have to... <laughs> he finally got John to hang up. <laughs> he just wouldn't hang it up. He was about to spend the whole hour with us he was on our podcast. It, dude. Did we actually start? Are we on? Yeah, we're on. And the team surfed Haliva for two hours this morning. Wow. Is absolutely Haliva is pretty much a, a, an exposure training because of how gnarly the current is. The setup of the wave pulls you back into the bowl of the biggest part where you can get the most pounded. And I think I've seen both pretty much everyone today oh my get God, like a dude. 10 to 12 footer. Like Koa, I thought was getting a two wave hold down at one I point. I was close. <laughs> You're close. I was about to pop up just waving for the, for anyone. Any, I bailed a couple times. Yeah. Oh, I did too. Yeah, I was like, there's a few. I was like, I just don't have it in me to try and wrestle this thing. Yeah. yeah. And so, I was like, I'm just going for a swim. So Haliva is where they hold surf events and stuff but it's really fun when it's about like i'd say eight feet is like really sick haliva yeah catch a bunch of waves the current's really bad but then once it hits like the 10 to 12 foot like it was today it turns into this wave that is just it's a nightmare you can paddle as hard as you want against the current and you're still gonna get pulled up the point and there's the craziest ugliest warbly double ups ever huge double that are ups literally pulling you the waves pulling you into the impact zone the entire time. So you're just basically paddling to just not get caught inside and hopefully chip in the one out the back. That's the, my session today. That was it. I caught three terrible, terrible waves and came in. The fun to scary matrix changes really quick when yeah. you add a couple feet. Like yeah. that Holly, six to yeah. eight foot, you're like so fun. You can ride a shortboard, whatever. I, think, I actually rode a shortboard today. It was a terrible idea. That's off. You I were on a shortboard. I was on a 6'4". Yeah, Me too, 6'4". Yeah. I was teasing John because he's usually always on the small boards. And I was like, what are you doing with your Waimea gun out here? <laughs> it would have been a nightmare like, on a shortboard. Like, you're going to be purling. And then I was just going to Molokai, <laughs> drifting out to see. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. My life. It's, it's got to be one of the more intimidating waves on North Shore when it's big. It's crazy because like you're saying like that current just doesn't stop. Yeah. And you're paddling for your life to not get caught inside, but then trying to position and like you get that super stiff neck from so looking stiff. over like, your shoulder. Pretty much if you paddle for a wave and miss it, you're screwed because the current's so strong, you're now on the inside and you can't barely fight your way back out in time. And you're like paddling for a wave and not getting it is you might as well have just gone over the falls because well, you're just going to get the next one. The worst thing you can do, I figured out today, was when I first came out, I saw you do it. And then I did it, like, first wave of my session is stand up for a second and then kick out. Oh, when I saw you on the paddle out yeah. after I was doing when the was huge wash out, around, and, yeah. And then I came out and did the same thing. Yeah. And you get just right in the perfect impact zone. So there's this, like, smoked at the end of Hollywood, on top of the current and where it pulls you and the size when it's big, the washing machine, at the end of the wave, it's the, what they call the toilet bowl is this section of reef that the whole wave like quadruples up on. It's so shallow that it just turns into a gurgle. And this today, the reef is literally popping out of the water yeah. as we're like trying to that duck was, dive. Yep. Dry. Dry. That was going dry. Uh, dry reef. See you, Jack. Okay, Jack. Jack. Jack's going to physical therapy to work on his hip. Get that hip, boy. And then an AA meeting, right? Yep. Yep, yep. yep. <laughs> 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 um, who, uh, Ross Williams. Dove on the toilet bowl. He's a Hollywood loke dog. He knows that spot. Surfs as good as anybody. Yeah. He still just got caught off guard, jumped, went face first, and like blew his face out bad. Remember? Like, but dude, um, Kalad told us an exact story Kalad like that. Alexander, on the beach. When we came in, same, he has the same story. He's in the. He did it? Serving with Makua years ago. Yeah. Said he was, he had a brand new board, so 
he like bailed his board a little bit to get off. Like to he not didn't want to it. hit the reef. And he said he grabbed onto a coral head and was just bear hugging this thing. And he said a wave hit him and he just whacked his, his forehead on the reef. Yeah. And got 14 stitches in his head, Dude, in his face. That spot is scary. Yeah. When I'm paddling and it's just, you feel it start surging and you're like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. You you're can't like, do anything. You're paddling like a turtle. Yeah. And I'm like, if I even push down, I'm going to either like tear my knuckles off or blow my fins out. So I just do like the flat palm push down a tiny bit, like barely duck dive and just put my head down. Like, yeah. Trying to just full like, star, I call it star fishing. Full starfish. Yeah. yeah. And you get all flat. Yeah. It's like, please, please don't push me to the reef. I basically am totally okay with just getting smoked just in. I just don't, don't want to go down. Yeah. I'll sacrifice my surfboard whenever. <laughs> surfing, anytime. There's no, there's no point in my surfing career where I will. Sacrifice get, your body instead of your board. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Faisal. Sorry. I'm it's surprised like, people haven't um, gotten like more snagged too because it goes so yeah, dry. So dry, you can hook your leash like for sure. Freaking, and it's not, it's like pretty my, sharp. Uh, super like sharp. My super sharp. Neos yeah. snag job. So scary. It's just like that leash snag is scary. Snag. Snaggle too. Snag. Yeah. What happened to Neos? I don't remember. You, oh, oh this, wait, I the, do going out, did you, right? Did you tell this you story on the stuck, podcast yet? I, think, I feel like I would have. Did you. You got to tell the story. Do it again. Just just for <laughs> another again. time right now. Just in case. I don't know. We've got a bunch of um, memory loss. This over story here. is crazy. But if I didn't, if I did tell the story, sorry, guys. If I didn't, here it goes. Um, just tell it the same, just a little bit differently. Okay. <laughs> That's what Nate does. Change, change a major That's a moment. Story, right? I just worded it differently. Um, well, anyways, the three amigos here and then a few more of the boys went to... Um, Indonesia, who chased the biggest Nias well ever. Yeah. Has it ever gotten bigger than that? I don't think so. In our time? Uh, not since then, at least. And I haven't seen... I've never seen anything before, before yeah. or after that was that big. But I don't um, think I'd want to see the wave any bigger. That was gnarly. That, no. But, um, yeah, so we getting went... Getting out. Yeah, getting out was just the gnarliest and thing ever. That was my first time ever. You guys might have gone before me, maybe, once or twice. To Neos? Yeah. I, it was all our first time. Oh, but. No, no, no. Well, I, I've been a couple you've times. You've been with Makua guys. Uh. Yeah. And where I paddled out the big day, I've never paddled out before because I think of what happened to you. So that well, was what... I went I, around. There's two ways to paddle I out. I went hardway. straight out. I went the hard way. Where we were staying. Yep. And so Neos is this insane wave, one of the best waves in the world. But um, after it gets a certain size, I guess the keyhole doesn't exist anymore. And I just... Thought like, that's the way to well, do it. Well, it does if you can time it right. Some yeah, guys were getting maybe. out. So like, but you guys that day went straight. The, I went defined. nowhere took, near that keyhole. It was the long a way. raging river. Yeah. yeah. So like, I was a little behind, and I thought everyone went that way. So I was just like, cool. I'm just because it's do the way the, we're paddling out the days before. Yeah. It's just like what you do. So I go to this keyhole, and it's like shallow. I don't know, like. Maybe like chest deep water, you walk out a little bit and then like you time it with the waves and then you jump in this keyhole. It takes you right around the back of the wave, super short paddle. And I'm like, just another morning, I'm like, okay, this is the day, it's bombing. Um, I mean, actually it wasn't just another morning, that day was huge. We it were was like- massive. <laughs> it was gnarly and we had like no flotation or like real step ups. We were all under. The only guy who had a step up was Healy and he yeah. got one of the best waves he of the had day. His, yeah. Healy he had his, and Bromley. He had his wife. Oh, bring true. it. Yeah. Yeah. She flew. Kim was such a trooper. She flew all the way to end up dragging his guns because he was undergunned. She, she did that just board. for the swell? I think so. But then they went on like vacation. But like, yeah, she hooked him <laughs> in up. In the name of <laughs> the, the thing this. we've convinced our wives to do <laughs> yeah. in the name of vacation. <laughs> it's for a vacation. But <laughs> you, you can travel to Europe. Words. Come with me. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. freezing with a handicap. <laughs> <laughs> this is in Italy. Watch we'll we'll go there after. <laughs> they have really good food, I promise. <laughs> But, uh, we actually won't go there. This other swell popped up. <laughs> yeah. And now I've got to go to Indo. See ya. <laughs> Sorry, bye. Um, oh, yeah. So anyways, the keyhole. Super sketchy. Um, I time it terribly. I'm walking out. This huge set comes, but I'm like in like stomach to chest deep water. And I'm like, I think I'm good. I'm not right at the keyhole. Anyways, this surge washes in. I jump over a couple whitewash, but you know, it's like a bay. Yeah, it fills so with it water. So it all washes in and it fills up. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm like looking 
and the water's getting higher and I'm like starting to get to the point where I'm tippy toeing and then oh. I'm on my board and I can't really plant my feet. Oh and my gosh. All that water had to like go back out. Yeah. It started pulling me and I was just like, oh shit. And it was like super sharp reef and I'm trying to plant my feet and the reef's breaking and I'm getting cuts on my feet. So I start kind of like going with it. Next thing I know, it's just like a waterfall. Like I'm going down the keyhole. I have my thick leash for my step up. It was like a 6'3", mm-hmm. but I had like a thick leash. Dude, the thing just snags. All of a sudden, I'm upside down, like with my leg stretched out. And there's a waterfall, like all this pressure on me. I was like fighting as hard as I could. And, you know, we've all done the training, like how you learn. Like You think it would grab. be easy, but yeah, it's really, like. Pull it. Yeah. Just peel it. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember that training. I in, remember the training. In the but brag it, training. It's not as easy it, in, the, in the moment. Like I had, a, I was similar, like with the water pressure. I just remember this one moment. I was so baffled. I couldn't do the reach. Yeah. But I mean, I was Well, typically when you get in life. situations like that and waves big enough, you have a pull tab on your leash. And if I get, but you didn't because we weren't expecting yeah, it to yeah. be like I that. I had like a thick pipe leash. Yeah, you so usually just go, you're just like this, like trying to get this little loop on your ankle. You just finally get it. Yeah. And it like, so I remember trying to climb my thigh and like grab my knee though, just to like pull the tab. Mm-hmm. And um, every time I was getting super close with like the steady flow, it would just like stretch me all the way out again. And I remember thinking, none of you guys are around. There was nobody next to me piling out. And I was just like, I'm going to black out. And no one would know second. you went out at that moment. Yeah. Like you would and, just be under there. And I was just like, literally thinking like, in my head, like, as all this shit's going on, I'm, like, thinking, like, okay, I'm going to black out. Who's going to grab me? I started thinking, like, who's going to see me or whatever. So I was just, like, holy shit. And I'm, like, I got to get this fucking thing off. I'm, like, there's <laughs> no one around. a nightmare. So I'm, so I'm, like, fighting this. But uh, imagine when you're, like, running out of breath, fighting as hard as you can to do the strongest crunch of your life. Yeah. It felt like I had 500 pounds of yeah. pressure on my chest trying to peel this thing i finally get my hand to it and it slips and i get stretched out again on that like on that moment i remember being like it's done i'm, I'm blacking out i'm this is like where i die so and, uh, gnarly. and i was like thinking like okay one last try because it was like so exhausting and this is all i'm probably underwater for like close to a minute but it felt like an eternity felt like yeah. five minutes that's but this a long is probably time like fighting yeah, too. it was probably like forty seconds. Mm-hmm. But like when you're not prepared, you don't breathe up. Like that forty yeah. seconds, I was like, I was running out of air. And then um, I'm going to give another try, and like I seriously feel myself going lightheaded, like almost like on the verge of blacking out as I'm trying to like get to just peel this fucking tab. Right when I'm like sitting up trying to get close, my leash snaps and I tumble down. Like it was weird. Like. You know, it was like kind of murky. Yeah. I never saw how deep it went. No, it went off a it ledge. It like went deep and I was tumbling down this thing and I got, remember how scratched up my back got? I got all torn up. That's crazy. I pop up, grab my board and I just started snapping. I was just <laughs> like, fuck. <laughs> just like so mad. Like, at, I don't know what, like the fact that I almost died, the fact yeah. that I like, was by myself, like. I found out you guys are all like, it's firing. And I was all torn up, broken leash. And I was just like, you guys have no idea what just happened. And it's pretty crazy how we've all been in a situation where it's like, when it's not you, you're like, you'll be yeah, right. Yeah, the, waves yeah. are, the waves are fucking yeah, firing. Yeah, like, totally. yeah. You're fine. So yeah, like, like, you guys were kind of like, you're good, you're good. And yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to go get a new leash. And I went in, so defeated, grabbed a new leash, and then we went back out, didn't take the keyhole. We had an amazing time. Yeah. You should that throw some trip. clips in there from yeah, Jack that to Will, show how, sure. how crazy it. that was. It's too bad we don't have your keyhole situation on footage. <laughs> you know what actually popped up later was, um, remember Gordo, the Brazilian? Yeah. He had a story. He was filming the waves. And then at the end of his, he was filming for a while. At the end of his story, you, he pans to the keyhole and my board's tombstoning. Oh my And then gosh. they stopped the video because they realized I was on the board but so, that's so that they was did right, they had eyes on you that was right before my leash broke, broke so like they would have been the ones to maybe get to me but um 
they were up at the house. So like it would have been a while. It would have been a while. And it would have been super fucking hard in yeah. the oh, rip. Boy, to that's grab a someone. scary yeah. place too. Had some to get close calls. Up. Yeah. yeah that I, one, well, I that wonder if like I wonder like in that situation the the call is to like give a few attempts at just snapping your leash with your leg. Like I had when I had it it get caught it I had happened that Lance is right on the reef in front of it. Not in any nearly as gnarly of a situation as that. But I just, there was a moment where I was like, oh, I can't reach it. Like, like you said, like I went for it and it just surged me back down. Yeah. Like I just had the thought like, oh, I, fuck, I always thought that'd be so easy. Yeah. And then I just, instead of reaching again, I just went three times with my leg against my leash. Cause yeah. I was like, this thing's going to max out if I yeah. try hard enough. Yeah. And the leash, um, broke, snapped on like the third one and at the same time the coral head it was wrapped on broke off oh shit so the leash broke and the coral head broke yeah but you know like when you've ever like been caught really bad have you guys ever like purposely snapped your leash or like yanked yeah. hard enough like i've done it at chopes maybe twice yeah where i've bailed yeah didn't ha- hadn't had time to pull it yeah yeah and just yanked my leg so hard that at the same time with the energy of the wave the leash snapped because uh people who like maybe haven't been in that situation like we are constantly trying to fight to not break it yeah we're like going with it yeah you know? sometimes you're like trying yeah. to like lean out your yeah, body to I not do the snap full leg twist and like playing i think laird might have developed that one or something yeah. like yeah he did i think but um i i'm always trying to save my leash and board because i think like that's my flotation device but i fully been i think at tropes would have been or um cloud break Cloud I break. think the time oh, that you, huge one. <laughs> the time me and you swam yeah. through that giant wave, yeah. I kicked as hard as I could, and I just heard the tack, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Okay, I'm not going over. I'm free. My board's gone, but I'm I'm swimming through this thing." That's scary because, like, nowadays the, you're not pulling hard enough to snap that leash. I mean, the leashes are this thick. N- now they're like yeah. there is the pull cord for a reason because yeah. that leash is just not gonna like. Does your black ones have that? Yeah. Oh, they do. Okay, yeah. sweet. Yeah, those are good. Good uh, feature to have. Yeah, and I always yeah. like put it on. I put the leash on the way they're made and how you would normally tie your leash. The pull cord would aim down, but I always flip it and put it on so upside up. down so the pull cord is facing up close to me. Yeah. So another, like I would be like pink. Another funny story about those is one time we we're all surfing giant Himalayas, and I pulled mine, and I was. Just, I don't know, in the moment, like, it was, we're all getting caught by Just a Just yelled wave. grenade. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dude, I pulled the thing, and I threw it. Grenade! Like, I literally pulled the tap, threw it, and I dove under. And, like, I came up, and everyone picked this up. And then I grabbed my board, and I went to, like, put my leash back on. And I was like, I threw it my fucking register. tab. <laughs> yeah. Like, at that moment, it hit me. I was like, oh, my God, I threw the tab. Like, I don't know. I was like, we're at war. We're going it, to war with the wave. It's so interesting, like... The way you think about it in the last five, ten years, how fast equipment is evolving. And then it, how, like, just the last two years, think about where the paddle axe were at. And now how we've talked about a bunch in here, but they're getting leaner and changing. And they're almost like, and now, like, just that last trip in Fiji, Benji ended up, didn't have a bit, his paddle axe wasn't big enough. So he rode this other board that was literally like one of those old school guns it was a seven seven ten with crazy rocker and so lean on the rails like as lean as your six sixes use at pipe like co always uses like real lean sharp railed boards like i have more volume usually but it felt like one of your pipe blades the six sixes but it was a seven ten just banana it wasn't that bad that but parker coffin actually had one that was absolutely (laughs) banana boat and i said he ride for channel island yeah who Parker? I don't know, because I've had the few Channel Islands I have had that I brought to Chopes one time. It was a banana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a banana. So I just pushed water. Yeah, yeah he was kind of like, "What do you think about this?" And I'm like, "Dude, this thing feels like a blade. The only worry is like that banana nose <laughs> might just push water yeah. gnarly." But like, you're just <laughs> doing his head in. But he <laughs> actually like. He took he one of the steepest drops of the day on this. Like he had this crazy frontside drop. Like and he has six style too, yeah, so it just looked so it looked really cool. But the banana board might have saved him. Really, dude. Full on. It was the kind of drop where right in the most critical part, 
water flew off the nose oh. and i was like it's it's make or break now yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then he just went like boom and like made it it was a banana rock <laughs> it was a Dude. rocker Had but uh, going back to what i was gonna say is benji rode this board and and it honestly felt like really sick and i know my pat my paddocks have turned to the porto paddy model which is getting leaner on the rails and i'm mm-hmm. even after this swell and been talking with benji and how that board felt and seeing like how he rode some of the waves front side, it honestly looked like the way it was cutting into the face. I swear these guns might end up making a full circle. There'll be changes, but they'll go go back to like those guns that we saw like Andy and Kelly Just and Bruce using in the Eddy. Chippy. Like, Dude, remember those boards they used? The rocker yeah. was out of control. Andy, but, MCD days. But Just they like, were so knifey on the rails yeah. and the tails so much knifier than the boards we have now yeah. and i think what's changed is we went from those okay to we want to catch the biggest wave ever add volume okay we've caught the biggest waves but no when one you add volume the rails become yeah huge. no one wants to go straight go, anymore go straight yeah. let's perform and so it's going back and i think like where it's going to end up is our positioning is so much better now we're not sitting in a position to catch a wave and go straight we're sitting in a position to catch it really later on the face. And I think these guns are like, I literally, when I got home, I ordered, I ordered an eight, five next step. And I said, do not change the next step file at all. Don't make it anything like a paddle act necessarily, but let's just experiment with an eight, five next step. That gray one you had. So I did that magic a while ago. I ordered a full quiver of like eight, eight O's. I think I went from seven, four, to eight six. So when you use the X's on really? everything? No, no. Oh, where did these boards go? Dude, I gave them all back. They were bad feeling. So bad, I was scared to even ride them. Really? Like, not because I said the same thing, but this was before the next steps have gotten to where they are now. Yeah. And I was like, what? Like, no. I was just like, just do it. Yeah. Like, I want it. I want it. And he's like, okay. And then I got him, and he was just like, I told you so moment. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, you're right. And I gave him back. I was like, I was too scared to use them. But I think now the next steps aren't as like sharp in the nose. Mm -hmm. Whereas before they were. Oh, I remember they they used to be super narrow in the nose. When that got to a big board, it was like, what am I looking at? Yeah. So that, that makes sense. I basically like wasted a bunch of material and I think I totally, but hopefully they sold them. Yeah, he probably I totally agree, to though. Some... I think it is like starting to go back full circle, but with like the adjustments of the. That's what's going to be so cool is so it's going to have all the feedback we've given built into like kind of similar to those old guns, but with everything new. Yeah, like they'll like be basically just enough rocker, just augmented, enough updated versions of those ones. The gray one you had over here, I literally told Paisel, I said, that board is Make a future. I said, that's the future of big wave yeah. surfing. I said, I need a copy of that thing. That board felt magic. That's was, the one you rode and left? That's the one I rode and left in Fiji to just be there because that just fit foam, that though? wave. It's or regular we- foam. Or just A lot of times, like for the guns, they glass them heavy because no one wants to break a gun. Mm-hmm. But it's um, so expensive for... Like, ex- exactly. For item. us, though, it's different. It's like... Oh, I'll, I'll risk it breaking for the performance gain. Totally. And like you said, that board felt good, and that board felt good on the wave. Like yeah. it felt good in your hands on land, and then on the wave, it was just like and get and that was granted. Like that swell was there was not a drop out of place. It was yeah. the cleanest big waves ever. Like and big waves you always come with storm and weather, and there's yeah. always something going on. But that was just somehow conditions were better than expected, and. So the board, all boards are going to feel pretty good, but certain things like going fast down the face, like some boards have a weird sticky spot in their board. That thing just is like absolute blade enough that I was able to like, it was a big wave and it was perfect, but I felt so comfortable enough to like relax and like be Dude, like, that, Oh my God. No grab was yeah. like, you could tell it felt good because of you your could trust the board. And yeah. like, even like looking up, I could trust the board was going to keep doing what it's doing. Yeah. And it's just like, like when other guys are like just holding on, like, please don't pearl or bog out or hit that sticky part. Like, which happens a lot. Yeah. Like, even on our big, big boards, like they feel good, but you know, every now and then it jaws or something, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, that felt funky for a second. Well, you yep. know what I always think feels so funky? 
is the leash dragging, the huge leash dragging. It what, is what so much drag. I was on the, at the 10 foot pool. So it wasn't the crazy 12 foot? No. Not the jaws. So I've noticed no. I don't now when I go out to like places here, I'll use the way thinner leash. Yep. Because it feels so much better. And those huge clear ones that the kind used to make, there's so much drag. Like there's night and so day much difference. drag in you those can, things, I dude. I can even yeah. test how the board felt if I rode one of those huge leashes on it. Mm -hmm. Another it was thing, just like so another much thing drag. to think about is the reason they were making those leashes so gnarly was because the surfboard was your flotation and survival. Yeah. Now we have all this. We got our impact vest. We got our pool vest. I know. What We're going to pop up. No leash. No leash would be so fast. That that would we already, be, we oh, already have exactly. a safety. It depends. Like, and it would save the board. It would Jaws, save the board. Jaws, you can't because you can, the, the rocks, rocks will destroy yeah. it. But like, like Hemis and I don't know, maybe probably Cloud Break and stuff. Like those places you could totally get away with no leash because as long as you cut your I flotation. Sometimes. Well, I mean, I pulled my leash. I snapped it and it got washed in, into the lagoon and it was totally fine but uh i think that's what those cords were those leashes were like designed for was to like not separate from the board but then boards are folding it's definitely and like dragging and you can feel it big time and it's come to a point where like tech gets so good that those those the kind ones are so gnarly that like they uh, are so strong it becomes a little bit of dangerous because i've gone over the falls that thing Countless will times. yank you so that. hard. And the one dude, that was just bad positioning. Not that he positioned badly, but bad place, wrong time, wrong place. The guy at Jaws, lip landed between him and his bailed board. Shot the board vertical as he dove under and snapped his femur. Because it pulled his leg straight oh up. Oh my who? gosh. What ha who was this? This was a, I think that he was, was like a South African ago? guy two years ago on that oh. like really clean day they had i remember hearing and about that. the dude then went over the falls and he had a three wave beat down hold down ten, his, with his femur beat down, just doing break dancing. 10 foot board oh, attached gosh. to a broken femur like just talk Very about he would have worst shocked, situation sure. ever guaranteed like, yeah. shock but the pain would have been unbelievable i'd be like, terrified of the bone cutting the artery too yeah or just rolling. cutting your there. leg off Pulling your leg off. Yeah. Yeah, those leashes have pulled a lot of sketchy Scared. things. I remember... What do you think about that, Nate? <laughs> I'm tripping, tripping on it. Sure you just I'm going tripping. back and forth. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. And <laughs> so oh my I'm God. just tripping on this thing. <laughs> Nate's getting whiplash. She's like, tripping so hard. Tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. You, you tell. You Nate's talk, too. Put start putting leashes around his neck. I need a <laughs> yeah, neck. I need a neck brace after this podcast <laughs> sitting in the middle here. Nate's got whiplash from that oh. story time. That is scary, Jeez. dude. I agree. That is terrifying. And, and stories yeah. are entertaining. So <laughs> I think there is going to be a point where the leashes get to where like, there is a happy medium. Like they need to stretch a little bit. They can't just be a. <laughs> but there is. There is Let a me point. tell you. Let me tell you. I got good things to say. <laughs> They're gonna be a middle ground, and you're gonna like it a lot. Both of you guys are uh, gonna love it. Should we just start selling them? <laughs> Let's just start selling our own leashes. Guaranteed okay. to snap uh, at your convenience. Yeah. Sometimes, though, there is a time and a place, like you said, at Chopes or even Jaws, that you really want to not be connected to your board. Yeah. So you would like your leash to snap. That's why we have the pole it, taps. it needs to stretch and snap at a certain point. So I think the thing with those Jaws leashes. There was not enough stretch because they were just like we don't want them to break, mm -hmm. and then they made a leash that just doesn't break. Yeah, and but it it comes at a cost of like yanking. Yeah. yeah, like think about how many times you got pounded with that thing, and you come up and your like leg and knee is sore, dude. Because your, your board is just out of the socket. That ten foot board is just pulling you so hard, going like this mm -hmm. in the white one. Those the those ones, ones we I've been using are pretty happy medium. Not yeah, our, I not like those. Trip. I like the the one you yeah. gave me is like. Exactly in between the Dekine we're talking yep. about and the one I use here. Yep. And Kai Lenny, who he just... Who's that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he uses like all kinds of gear because he's not like affiliated really. Yeah. He has settled after doing some of his own prototypes. He's settled on that same one. We're using the FCS 10-foot pull cord leash. Yeah. 
Yeah, he definitely gets his reps in. He w- he had a crazy one that Pier One session we had. He had the weirdest. So he had like a, it was a gnarly bungee cord with a cover over it, and his theory was oh, that it was a it, shorter one. Yeah, shorter, but more stretch. Like a boogie board leash. Almost like that, but it was like, it was a, like how you would have a spear gun bungee type of Dude, material. He had that at- pipe i think one day and i was like he was testing it was terrifying looking it it got terrifying i think because the he said it was it didn't feel like the yank like we're talking about but the rebound was crazy and so he had to like well that's another scary part scary thing about leashes Mm -hmm. is you'll come up and then the board will be tombstoning or pulling Mm -hmm. and then it finally releases and comes flying out of the water back at you like a missile how scary is a big board it's like even more How sketchy. scary is that Super when you dangerous. feel no tension? And no you know, tension is you, the worst. You know it's about to cover, fly. Just at, cover your head. At Haliva, that happened to me. I popped up by the toilet bowl, and all of a sudden, I was like, where's my board? And I was like, oh, I shit. I start swimming away. I'm as soon like, as I oh. turned, my fin just clipped me in the back Ooh. of the head. Like, Today? No, no, no. Oh, oh at like Haliva. A couple time, yeah. sessions ago. Out That's there. so oh, sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Today, I was in a position where I was like, please, leash, don't break. Because if my leash broke, <laughs> I would have ended up, out, uh, yeah, uh, bailing on one. I was like, I'm It would have been a rescue. In, no, I would for sure. I would have been in the channel, like, that current is waiting psycho, for a dude. boat. There was no way you're getting in today. I would have saved you. I was, I was thinking about that. <laughs> I would have I I paddled the, over and been like, we're in it together. I had yeah. the funniest thought of being like, <laughs> if my leash broke, I guarantee Nate would have came out here and we probably would have just chilled <laughs> out. <laughs> we would have just been like, we're going <laughs> to get rescued by somebody. <laughs> I straight up was so You would have tired. to. You yeah, have I, to I totally there. would. I would yeah. never let I anyone. I was so tired out there. I was thinking if I break my board or break my leash, I'm going to just straight up yell to one of the boys and say, help me. Help me. For sure. I'm no. not going to just swim out the back. That's it's funny that we so all sh- think that because so it's just sharky like, and eerie too. Over the there. most yeah. sharky yeah. channel That's on where they the island. All the shark tours out. Yeah. Yes. The sharks are just like, oh, there goes the boat. Follow them in. Like, oh. They're like trained. Human. As soon as they Human. pull up in the boat engines idle sharks just roll up they just know but i uh, love it hopefully they're well fed and happy yeah but yeah that's one's definitely eerie and that current was psycho today i was like not prepared to go for a some i think no. today was the worst current i've personally seen out there there was one other time i was out there and russo was on a ski that might have been worse and he was picking was it you were out you must have been out and John, maybe yep. he was picking us up and dropping us in the channel. We get sucked. He back pulled out. in with Cole yeah, on the yeah, back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That wave is. It's no joke when it's big. No. Like yeah. It's and uh, it's also like people like, I swear people think of it as like, uh, oh, that's just like some kooky point break thing and never really know like the potential yeah. of it though. When it gets bigger, it actually. There's 15 foot barrels out there mm-hmm. on the right well, day when it's really big, yeah. and it's doubled up. Nearly like a slab, like really scary, really big barrels. So hard to posi- position position yourself. Yeah, I was looking at it today when I pulled up. I was watching you guys. And I was getting ready. I was like, I saw like four huge barrels. I was like, if Eli, Nate, John, and Ivan <laughs> like aren't empties, on those, yeah. yeah, I'm like, they're, they, you can't. They must not be able to see them. Yeah, it it's was just, so strange. How about when you do a lap? And you're like piling out and you're like, I think I'm in the spot and you just don't see your friends. They're just out the back. So I got far a couple out. and you, uh, you, John, and yeah, I. Yeah, we were there. stuck um, out there. We were I waving you guys, at you. I thought you guys caught a wave and maybe went in. I was like, where the hell are these guys? Because I thought I was in the spot. They're or, out the back. Or what about when you're out the back and someone catches a wave and you think they went in, but you see them pop out of the toilet bowl yeah. and they're like 300 yeah, yards yeah. away and you're like, Dude. so spooky feeling so you're like spooky. oh i don't like this because on top of being under, out there <laughs> yeah, yeah. you get caught inside yeah. like by a rogue 12 foot and you're slab. just always just under like redlining yeah Ali, but like you're like, like you're, you're never sitting still ever you're not exhausted well you actually kind of are sometimes but like you're like just under like super exhausted yeah to the point where you're like if i get caught by a 12 footer i'm just gonna be so toast <laughs> yeah just cut and we have like the built-in like surf your whole life built-in paddle endurance that we can like sit at that just under threshold. exhaustion threshold like yeah. for a long long time yeah. like and holly Evo puts that to the test like even john who's the best paddler ever today was like my arms yeah. like, I, oh yeah. my arms I was, I was like oh shoot like we're done for. Yeah. We're done for. Like a 12-footer on the head. 
Yeah. He did. Yeah. And the worst part was, or like the worst part for him is I look in, it's a mutant double up and he's trying to make it. Like he's like thinking I'm going to make it through. I'm going to make it through. And he's scratching super fast at me who I'm on the top of the wave. Like, oh my God, he's, he's going to do it somehow. Of course he is. Yeah. Yeah. The wave goes and I expect to see his head pop up. Bro, he was Never 10 foot up. from me. He popped up like 60 feet inside <laughs> yeah. off of his board. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like annihilated. Yeah. I went over the wave too and I was like, yikes. yikes. He always teases me yikes. about this one session we had out there where that happened to me. And he just got under it and he looked at me with the biggest smile and I was like, I'm fucked. Dude. Yeah. Thing broke right one foot in front of me and I just went to the beach. I have the best story about this with John. Because you know how he makes it through everything. Right? Every, yeah. Like every, it's, mm-hmm. it's weird. It's, 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 it's actually freakish. at every place. Yeah. Back door. Like, yeah. We, we probably do well amongst a lot of people, but yeah. he does well amongst us. us. The first eddy I was ever in, in 2016, we're in the same heat, and this rogue set comes through and catches everyone in the heat inside. And I'm next to John being like... <laughs> He's getting caught with me. Yeah, like, we're together. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We bail. And like it was one of those that it didn't land on us, but it was a big enough wave to be like, okay, like, you know, when you're like, I'm going under, but I'm going over. Yeah. So it was like that. And I, I'm going like swimming underwater so hard, like bit didn't even come close to making it straight over the falls. End up with Uncle Clyde, I cow, just we're both fully inflated, just like tripping and <laughs> smoked by these white watery double ups. Somehow... I was right next to John. I'm looking out, and he's paddling over waves. <laughs> oh, he like, made it through. Right. Yeah. Made and it then, through. Dude, I get to the beach. I'm just like, I lay down on the sand for a second, <laughs> grab my other board, get back out because I broke it. This was in oh, the heat? This is in the heat. Oh, yeah. my god! I get back out there. I'm like, how? Tell me yeah. what, you, what deal you've made with the devil <laughs> yeah. to get through that one. Is that the one where you took the monster whitewater double yes, up? Yes, the monster whitewater oh. was the second one. Oh, you went again in the same heat. No, it was no, no, no. It was that wave. And oh then yeah, the yeah. Whitewater the, double up. The, I I remember seeing that happen and go down, and that whitewater double up was one of the scariest waves I've ever seen. Like yeah, that one landed directly on me. And where you were really at though was that day. So there, I'd never seen Waimea have do its third reef so consistently, or like yeah. it, it was catching you guys inside, but you were really just outside the main bowl. So yeah. you got pushed onto the impact zone of the main bowl. It's Where, not like, like you were like wave was. in pinballs. Like, you were in uh, the yeah. main was that, area. Was that the heat? Was- Kala and your brother collided. No, it was later in the day. Do you Different remember heat. me and Nate Wait, here, pulled up me, on the ski? Let me finish my story. For that. Let him yeah, finish. Yeah. Oh, so let me finish. <laughs> More. I'm snap here in a second. It's almost over. Bear with me. Come on. I get back out and I figure out what John has done to make it through the wave. He pulled his vest. We went under and he, we're like, as you're like at the moment of going over, like trying to swim, he pulled and created a bunch of drag with his suit. What? And made it. What a like theory! Like it started pulling him, but he went up too. He went like, up, and it he, but he inflated, inflated, so it couldn't pull him as easy. Yeah. Wow. And he wasn't inflated enough to where it was going to take him on the top over. Wow. He so pulled my vest. He brought science into the fight. Technology. Anyway. Wow. That's my story. Go ahead. No. <laughs> you go now. That was an insane, <laughs> that was an insane oh, wait, story. That, uh, I wanted that to keep way, it going. That way, that's <laughs> with, it. We want to hear the, the no, other no, no, story it's your because heat. it's way crazier. Um. Maku and Cole, I was on that wave. Yeah, that you day, were on the wave. I just saw, I, so, sorry, guys. No, no, this is your story. You okay. go. Get it. Okay, okay. You yeah, go. Let's go. It was my story. Get it yeah. out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just excited. Okay. I was like, you're <laughs> on the eddy. That same day, the heat before, John did that, and I got super smoked with Uncle Clyde. I'm in a heat with my brother, Maku, and Kala Alexander, and my whole life, of we've looked up to the eddy being like, we want to be on one of those waves with our heroes. 100%. Like, just taking off with them. I had caught a wave, and on the way back out, I'm like kind of towards the shoulder. It was a huge wave. And I look, and Maku and Kalar are scratching for this bomb. I'm like, I have to go. So I whip it, and out of the corner of my eye, I'm like taking off, and I actually fell at the bottom of the wave. All I see in the corner of my eye is what I think is Kalar falling <laughs> through a barrel. Like he looked like a, this big. <laughs> like falling top to bottom like a surf's up wave. Like dude, yeah, the movie. It was totally. Cody Maverick. Falling like this, just not on his board, just on a 25 footer. Yeah. And later I see the clip 
him and Makua collided, and Kala ends up doing a backflip. <laughs> it was over so a, gnarly. It was a twenty-five footer, and Makua made it out the back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, it was so <laughs> gnarly because you know how me and Nate weren't in yet. You were in, you John and the rest of the gang was in, but um. We were like, we're going to go surf somewhere. But we were so psyched when we found out it was your heat. We're like, we're going to go watch. And yeah. it's me, Nate, and Russo on the ski. And um, it was the funniest thing. Nate's just sitting down driving. I'm in the middle holding Nate. And I have <laughs> yeah, I Russo remember. on my back. It's we're just doing much a the wheelie. First set we're just, we saw, too. We're just doing a wheelie everywhere, though, yeah. on the ski. And it was fucking hilarious. But that, that was set the might have been the one that beached all the skis as well. Yeah, it was. It was yeah, that it was, set. That was yeah. the first thing we saw, though. And it was so crazy that... I'm watching Claw outside go around Bruce Irons, then colliding with Makua. I was screaming at that and Nate screaming, Koa! And I was like, <laughs> that was Claw. And he was like, Koa went. I didn't even see you yeah. because right next to you was so much chaos. Like, yeah. I was tunnel vision on Claw breakdancing in this 25 foot barrel. Yeah. That I didn't even see you, and that ended up being one of my biggest no that was, waves ever. That was insane. Was huge. And then that was like one of your best rides of the whole event. It was huge, that was and it was like first hand, first set, first hand view, and first set we saw, and we were just like, "Oh my god, this is the most legendary Eddie ever!" Dude, it, like, was it was so, so big, we were like, "Oh my god!" All how, of our friends just perished in one wave. Yeah. How funny is the Eddie the event? What it does to surfers, like the best surfers in the world. Are going on the craziest waves in the craziest spots, like positioning wise. Blinders on. It's just like it doesn't run every year, and it's so like prestigious that it's like I have to do something and I have to go, dude. I on actually anything. I thought about you a lot after the last Eddie because I felt like I kind of did what you did your first time, where I was like biggest and deepest. I will not allow another human being to sit <laughs> deeper than me. Yeah. So I was like, that's what going, I was thinking too. I was, I was going for glory. Like, I, I had like Kai Lenny, John, everyone. I was like, you guys can paddle me to Kauai. I'm going further out and deeper no matter what. But I had some of the best, biggest waves of my life, but I would have these crazy drops and then just get completely smoked every time. Because yeah. you're behind the main ball. Because I was yeah. way too deep, but I just wanted to like, prove something and i was just like in my mind i, I was know like the feeling i yeah. wish i could get to that mindset more that mindset i had that morning was like it's so rare to feel that way it didn't matter what came i was yeah. like i don't care if the sky goes black i wanted it to i was like yeah. i want the biggest wave in the world to come well, and i'm gonna go it's really crazy too with that event the Waimea Bay itself the beach turns into like a football stadium oh it's like a gladiator and like, arena. i've never seen any, like it's even crazier than pipe on like the CT day just because mm -hmm. of the energy in the ocean and there's probably like 10 times the amount of people way crazy and it, I swear that the valley like that bay echoes people's mm. like screams yeah. yeah it's like well it's always right. offshore wind coming out of that yeah. valley that's a good call there are a hundred thousand people in there the guys in the lineup are gonna hear the roar more than anyone. Dude, it's crazy. When you're the going whole out beach. for, I dude, I cannot wait till you get to one day. <laughs> I know. It's crazy enough because I just gonna... checked the date. Today is the day the waiting period, period ends. ends for the Eddie, and no didn't way. run. So wow. I missed it last year. Broken back. This year it doesn't run. It's crazy. You're gonna just let you're me gonna, surf one. You're gonna just. We'll we'll be there, but. The world isn't ready for Nasty Nate in good health. Just want to do hood rat base. stuff with my friends. Dude, we're going to have <laughs> so, so much force, fun. Force them to put us in the same heat. They yeah, have, we to. have to. They have to. We have to be in the Because I didn't heat. get to surf with you in this yeah, one. Yeah. I, How, I had the, this, this, that last Eddie I was in was awful for me. Honestly. I was going to ask you, how was the size, though, and, like, everything from the first one to the second one? Like, what was I think the better, second, worse, or? I, well, the first one was so long ago that I don't really remember. I remember it, it was big, but I think this past one was bigger. In a different way, though, right? It seemed like um, it was more doubled up and on the first bowl. But that last one had those weird cleanup sets the whole day. Yeah, it, it was The different like, direction, maybe. I definitely... I don't know. Why man is tricky because it's just... A, it's a really tall wave mm -hmm. when, it, when it's that size, like on those days. Yeah. And it's hard to say like what day was bigger 
or better, but all I know is like personally, the first Eddie, I went like blackout. Like I don't, yeah. even, I barely remember a lot of it because I was in that mindset of like, I just got into Eddie and I was way younger. So it's 2016. I don't know. Would have been eight years ago. I was like 21 or 22, maybe. Yeah, I felt and like you had to like prove I deserve to be here. And with I just these went, guys. same thing, gnarliest guys in the world. I was like, I'm going the deepest and I'm going to catch every single wave that comes my, yeah. comes my way. I don't care if everyone's like scratching over it. Whereas this one, it was just like too much of a shit show. Like I, I was first heat. It was super choppy. I you barely got down there in time. Seat. Yeah. Yeah. And John did really well. Traffic was so Tra- nice. Dude, the cops stopped me. It was just like, it was a situation. There was, was a like, lot going on. I, got, I finally got out there for my heat. And I didn't catch a good wave because I saw bombs. So I was like, oh, okay. Outside, it's on that ledge. Mm-hmm. So I'd go out there. And I was trying to be a little bit more strategic, I guess. Because I'm like, the only way you're going to win this is not by taking off clearly deep yeah. and getting smoked like i did the first one it's by picking waves like john and riding them all the way out Mm -hmm. and i was like okay i'm gonna do that and then i just positioned myself away from the waves at any set that came through Mm -hmm. so i was more frustrated this one and i think that maybe made me like see the waves as bigger rather than like fuck it i'm going i don't even care i'm not even looking at them yeah i'm just paddling yeah i went i I definitely got way more pounded the first one yeah. You were going Smoked. for it. That's kind of the mindset I had where I was just like so excited. I think like growing up our whole lives, you work so hard and pushing it. And, you know, it's like a huge goal and it's never a guarantee. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, such, it's crazy what it does to the best surfers in the world. Like it'll just push us or like if we're like if we went out to Jaws in the contest, we're not like. I'm going to go sit deep and go on closeouts oh, if I no have to. no chance. Yeah. Like, I'm like, There's no if s- the guys yeah. want to go deep and crazy, I'm like, go for it. I'm trying to make this thing. Like, yeah. I want to yeah. get, make heat. Mm-hmm. Maybe like, get barreled, but yeah. mainly just want to get the wave, make it, survive. But, like, yeah, the Eddie, the I was Eddie like, makes for great I, entertainment. I literally, That's why. for that reason. Mm-hmm. I literally was thinking, like, it felt, like, fake. Like, I was just like, it felt like a dream where I was, like, walking down the beach and it's like echoing and the ground is vibrating from people cheering and i was just like i could just wake up at any moment and like this is a dream and so then like cool going out i was just like doesn't matter what comes like yeah i'm going and i was like i thought about it after when i went sh- straight on a flight the next morning back to work in new zealand and i was just thinking like i was like that whole experience was just like so crazy it doesn't but, even feel real yeah but then like moving forward if we get to do it again, I was just like, cause I, that's what I was thinking. You did the first time was just full send, but like, yeah. you don't get a lot of the makes. I was like, maybe I'll be like a little more strategic send. But now I've done like, both. And the second time worked out awful for me. So, so now I'm like, I'm just going to put the blinders on and go, go and back to full send. Give just, the people what they want. <laughs> yeah. You know, cause like, like oddly <laughs> enough, like the Eddie in the Bay literally chooses its winner every year. Like, you're either yeah. that guy or you're not. Mm-hmm. You're either that guy that was somehow there for that one wave or the three waves you needed, or you're not. Like, I, well, that day, John won. He was just like. He was deep too. Even huh? when he took off deep, yeah. he was making the explosions. And he took off on the main peak too. But like, he was just right there for the best, biggest waves of the day. Mm-hmm. This year, Luke happened to be there for some of the closeout sets. Like he happened to be on his way or like in that wide bowl in that position yeah. where no everyone else was sitting on the deeper than the bowl peak and he happened to be the only one there to be able to ride the waves out. Yeah. And Yeah, that's true. It's like yeah, you would every know, time, you oddly enough, the kind Bay of just chooses me, the winner. It kind of reminded me of the shootout. Like if you really think about whoever wins the event. Eddie, the shootout. Um, now the Pipe Their Masters timing. is doing that forming uh, format. Um, whoever gets the windows. Yep. Because everybody rips. Everybody charges. Everyone's like, able to do everyone's it. Everyone's going to go for it 100%. Yeah. But it's like it takes a lot of Mother Nature and timing working with you. So it's like, totally. yeah, it's true. Yeah, like it's it kind of picks. It's events like that where it's not elimination because yeah. you don't have to just surf that 30-minute heat and turn fives into eights and nines. Mm-hmm. It's like you got to be on like the good ones. Yeah. And sometimes the good ones don't come in 30 minutes. No. 
and you're Very competing sure. not against yeah. the guys the in your heat. Fastest thirty minutes you'll ever. Everyone the yeah, whole day. You're competing feel. against the whole field. Mm -hmm. So, but I uh, do like it personally. I like those yeah. kind of events way better. Totally. The the no pressure of like I this have to. This makes for grind. more fun. Yeah. Yeah. But then sometimes like, it backfires when you get too comfortable and then the heat goes by. Yeah, you're like, we're no. Like, oh, shit, we didn't stand up. <laughs> you're like, we're too relaxed. What yeah. else did we, uh, we were saying we got a bunch of stuff we got to catch up on. Uh, we're going to have to do the next one. We're already in an hour. Oh, sh wow. It was an hour? Time flies. We're 53. We were getting into it. We're getting all worked up. <laughs> Guys, we almost Blew had Mr. Out. Cool on here. <laughs> Ivan was supposed to be here. We had big... Big uh, game plan. Yeah, Ivan said he was coming up, and then he just absolutely smoke bombed us and bailed. So we're gonna get him up here, and we're gonna hear all about what he has to say. Both your brothers were just sick of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> John you. wouldn't hang up. Wouldn't hang up. I was like, I kept going, okay, he, bye. And he just, I was just looking at the phone beeping. <laughs> he secretly wanted to be here. Yeah. yeah he he so wanted weird. to be included. Yeah. yeah. After a big Holly of a day. Yes. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for tuning in, listening, or watching, and hanging out with us. This is basically what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. But when we do end up to turn, when we do happen to turn the mics on, you guys get to join us for the conversations. So, do you have any um, shout-outs you had to do? Um, oh, yeah, do you want to thank anybody, Eli? My mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> you guys for watching. Thanks to my pals for being my pals. Um, and that's all I got. Yeah, we're going to do some ad reads, but we're going to record we them shoot. now. All yeah. this jury? Hmm? All this jury? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I only have one. <laughs>